Hello, YouTubers. This is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy, and welcome back to the channel for beginning collectors. If you're beginning, if you're looking to start a new collection, my channel is the one for that. I am, uh, I'll be accepting uh, questions and comments from everybody. Uh, hopefully you guys will be uh, leaving some more comments on my on my videos. I'd like to maybe do a live stream where I'll uh, answer questions and comments about uh, beginning collecting. Uh, any questions you want to know about uh, from steels to brands to knives of all kinds. So today we're going to do a discussion on branding and what you can expect when you when you limit your collection to just a particular brand or a particular type of knives or uh, what most most of us do is we usually stick with only made in the USA and what what good comes from that and what uh, what overall possible not harm but what you could be missing if you don't go with other other types of knife companies and that's what today's video is all about as far as knife as far as uh, knife discussion goes we are going to talk about a company called kaiser now you may have seen a bunch of these videos online with guys that talk about kaiser uh, a lot of people have praised them uh some people said that they're you know okay most most of the part most likely though that most of them have actually praised kaiser because they do they do do good good work so let's talk about branding for a second when we buy a knife we usually go with a company like spyderco kai or i guess kershaw and zt now spyderco has been around uh, they're from Golden, Colorado, USA. They've been around since 1978. Kershaw or Kai, I'm going to group these two together. Kershaw uh, or Kai, these guys have been around since 1974. Now, when you have that kind of longevity, there's certain expectations when you buy a knife. You expect it to be just close to perfect, and for the most part it is. And the quality and the value of what we pay for uh, doesn't go unnoticed. We love we love both those companies, or all three of those companies. Um, we love what they have to offer, but it's kind of I think it's kind of safe to assume that not every knife company is going to have everything you want. And when that happens, you may want to try going somewhere else. But the question is, should you take the risk? And in my case, I went with Kaiser. And I took the risk. So this knife was what we're looking at. This is the Kershaw Sliver. Sliver. Uh, if you get the orange one, they call it the Sunburst. I don't know why, but it's still, the, still, called, the, still called the Kaiser Sliver. So this is the the Kaiser Sliver, and it's a fairly large knife. Let's do some size comparisons. Here it is against the ZT801. So you can see the uh, the handle on the on the uh, Kaiser Sliver is really elongated. It's very long. I mean, in fact, if you tip it, put the tips. Put the tip of the knife up against the ZT801. The handle is close, but it actually kind of extends just a touch. So it's lengthwise, it's fairly large. Knife. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Spider Ghost Swish Bowie, which is another knife I'll get to next time. It's also my favorite knife in my collection. How about the Zero Tolerance, Z, the Zero Tone 0456 Black Wash? And let's also put it up against Spider Comb Mantra. And 
And just for fun, let's put it up against a really small knife so you can get a better idea. Here's a ZT-0900. That's a real small knife, but it's also a very stout knife. So there you go. So as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's a large knife, supposedly, lengthwise, but it's a very slim knife. It's always kind of hard to describe those knives that are long and thin, but basically it's a large knife. It's just slim. It's a slim knife. It's a liner lock, as you can see. And there's the liner right there. You can see right there, liner lock. It's got three standoffs on the back there for the back spacer, so it's an open construction, which doesn't make it look good on the front of the knife for looks. You got the three rivets there, plus the giant pivot in the middle popping out at you. That, I mean, aesthetically, it's not aesthetically pleasing, and neither is the pivot at the top. But I'm here to tell you, it still looks pretty good. But it doesn't look as attractive as anything Spyderco or Zero Tolerance or even Kershaw would put out. But it does work. Uh, if you look closely at the pivot, you can get an Allen wrench in there to adjust that if you want to. Or uh, even a screwdriver will work as well. So the pivot has something left to be desired as far as looks. It's got these two giant thumb studs right there on the knife. They're really big. They're so big. I think I can do this. They're so big. Well, actually, no. Oh, hold on. It's so big you can even stand it up uh, and it'll like lean over a little bit, but it can actually stand up the knife, <laughs> which is something I've never seen before. <coughs> Excuse me. But nevertheless, yeah, they're, they're huge. Thumb studs, but there's an advantage to that um, because they're so big. I can actually middle finger flick it with my middle finger uh, on there. Liner lock. It's got a pocket clip. It's not a very you know right there on the thing, which is tip up pocket clip. It's only one sided and only in one position, and that's it. So you can't really switch it over to the other side. There's no holes there, so you can't switch it over. As you can see. But the pocket clip is very tight and it will work for you. It does stick out of your pocket a little bit. Now the reason I bought this knife and took a risk with this knife, it's very simple. This knife is $61, folks. Okay. Now here's the surprise. Why would I spend $61 for this knife? Take a look at the steel on that. The steel on this knife is S35VN, guys. S35VN, $61. Okay. Now, I want you guys to think back in your mind. Can Spyderco produce a knife for 61 bucks? ZT? Can ZT do that? Mm, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. How about Kershaw? Okay, now, for $61, you not only get the knife, okay, in S35VN steel, they give you a nice box with it. Here's the box, right, which isn't a big deal, right? No big deal, a box is a box, but I mean, I'm telling you, that's a pretty, it's a, it's a hard box you get with that knife, and then you get another outer box, which is made out of cardboard. So, this box here, goes into this box. Not only that, I'm not done yet. With this knife, the Kaiser Slither, they're also going to give you a case. Take a look at this thing. I mean, it's you also get a few extra screws with the knife. Let's take a look at this case, man. This is not anything that is cheap in any way, shape, or form. I mean, it's, it's a nice case. $61 with the knife. And the boxes and everything come with screws. Of course, there's literature, which you also get with Spyderco and ZT. They give you some literature on the knife. So there you go. Okay. Now, let's get back to the knife because you guys are thinking, well, so what? It comes with all this garbage. I don't really care about the case. I care about the knife. So let's get back to the knife. And get back to the knife. What's the quality like on the knife? 
Folks, for $61, I'm going to tell you right now, the quality on this knife is, is excellent, this particular knife. Let's take a look at it closer. Look at the centering on it. It is fantastic. It's right down, split the middle. This thing is smooth. It's a very smooth knife. I don't, there's no, you know, there's no problems with the smoothness on this knife. So it's got smoothness. It's got, you know, the tolerances are there. The tight tolerances are there on this Chinese knife. I forgot to mention Kaiser is a Chinese company, guys. I need to make sure I make that clear. Kaiser is a Chinese made knife company. And the quality is there. I'm telling you, with this knife, the quality is there. Okay. So it's all aluminum scales. Open construction, nice thumb studs, opens very smooth. This is not a KVT ball bearing system knife, folks. This is a washer knife. There's the washers right there, phosphor bronze washers, they're right in there. As you can see them. So that's there. And it's a very tight knife. The, the knife has tight tolerances. There's also zero blade play. I'm not feeling it on this knife. There's none. None. So let's review this thing. Okay. For $61, you get a tight knife with all the nice tight tolerances, perfect centering. Okay. The looks are something to be desired. Let's go ahead and put that as a minus. You can maybe live with the looks or maybe not live with the looks, okay? But, like I said before, the tight tolerances there are there. The fit, the finish, the quality is all there. You get a nice case with this knife. You get a beautiful box with the knife. Okay? More importantly, for $61, something that Spyderco and Kai, and I'm not putting these this company the, any of these companies down, folks. Understand that I'm not. I'm just letting you know what else is out there. But Spyderco and Kai have not put out for sixty-one dollars an S35BN steel knife with the quality, the tight tolerances. Okay. The quality, the tight tolerances. Let's look at that centering again. Can you see that? That's dead center. Okay. The quality is there. There's no blade play on this knife. I'm not feeling it. Okay. So minuses on this knife probably be, from my perspective only, this is just my opinion, probably just looks. Okay. I mean, the three rivets on there and the big gigantic pivot that doesn't look like it's anything of high class and might not look that attractive to you, you'd have to learn to live with that. And I think that's about it. Other than that, you've got tight tolerances, you've got the quality. I mean, all aluminum construction. It's all there. The knife's also got, it's got good ergos. It feels really good in the hand. It's got nice jumping up at the top of the blade right there. Okay, and more importantly, the steel, once again, S35VN steel. Right there. Writing's kind of tiny. Let's do a paper cut test. Just to show. That's me, folks, not the knife. <laughs> Can't do that. Whoop, again, that's me. I need new paper. So, it's got everything you can need. Jeez, I can't see... There you go. So, the knife has everything that it needs that you need in a knife. And the knife is 61 bucks. Don't let my paper cutting uh, tear you off on that. I have used this knife and it has not failed me yet. So, $61. Kaiser, a Chinese-made company. Okay created this knife so that's it the Kaiser sliver uh, any comments or questions you guys may have 
regarding this knife. If you've never bought anything outside the United States and decided to go with another company outside the United States, I suggest you give it a try. Buy this knife. Um, I'm actually selling this knife not because I don't like it, but because I was so happy with the performance of this knife. I want to go with one of the other Kaiser knives. Maybe the, uh, I believe it's called the Kershaw Gemini, uh, the Kaiser Gemini I might want to buy, which is a little better, uh, heftier knife than this thin one. Again, I bought this knife just to try it out, and I was very happy. So now I'm going to sell this knife and get a better Kaiser knife and continue from there. So this has actually changed my habit of collecting and how I see knives and how I look at knives. I no longer believe that American-made company is the only company that I should buy knives from anymore. Now... I believe that if the quality is there, if the fit and finish is there, if the quality is there, if the fit and finish is there, and the tight tolerances are there, this is the company I want to go with no matter where the company is based from. It's always going to be, it's always going to come down to the quality, the materials, the fit, the finish, and the tight tolerances. And I'm telling you, Kaiser's got it. They've got it. So, any comments or questions regarding Kaiser, uh, please put your comments and questions below. really want to hear from you, what you think of this video, what you think of what, what I believe. Has it changed your thoughts on buying only a Made in America? I'm not trying to sway anybody. I'm just letting you know that there's other stuff out there. And this is going to happen to you regardless, okay? After a while, you're going to have your fill, of American-made knives. You're gonna have your fill of them. And you're gonna wanna, and you're gonna see that all the styles, while they're, they're fancy and they're fantastic and they've got the tight tolerances and everything, you're gonna start to get a little curious and wonder, well, do other companies do the same thing? Is it really only made in America? You're gonna wanna get curious, you're gonna wanna find out, and it's gonna open up a whole new world for you for collecting knives and learning what's out there. And that's all a part of the adventure of collecting tools like a knife, is you want to find out who else is doing other things and are there other companies out there that can satisfy if I feel like I want to try something different. And that's what this video is all about, trying something different, advancing yourself as a knife collector. Now, my, many of you guys may not be there yet, so I suggest Stick with what you're doing right now, because why? You're having fun doing it. You're enjoying it. So there's no reason for you to go and head out there and try a Chinese knife out. Do it when the time is right. Do it when you've had your fill of American-made knives, because we want to have the best pride, and we believe that America has the best stuff, and they do. I still believe that. But America's also a land of opportunity, and we are a land of consumers, and when we want to consume stuff, we're going to go with what, with what really works, what really has the quality that we're looking for. So there you go. Kaiser, a Chinese-made company where the quality is excellent in my book, my opinion. You guys find that out. Find out for yourselves if it's what you like. Check them out, Kaiser. They're fantastic. Uh, again, this is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy, signing off, hoping that you will find something fantastic in your next purchase of Sharp Art. This is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy, signing off. Please leave your comments and questions below, and when I, and please learn to like, subscribe, and share. Check, check subscribe down at the bottom of my channel if you like what I do. Really do appreciate that. And before I close off, I want to give some shout outs to some guys right here. Uh, this guy right here, this is the knife beater. He's my mentor. He does a fantastic job uh, doing knife reviews and discussion. Then there's also Mr. Sharp. He's another subscriber of mine. You want to check out his channel too. He does a lot of uh, Victorinox stuff. 
uh, wife's through 64. He's a great guy. I love this guy because he's from New York. He's from New Jersey, the East Coast. I'm from New York myself, and I kind of like the way he talks. I love his accent. Um, he mostly does ZT and Kershaw budget knives as well as other knives. He does knives like Kaiser. So if you want to see more Kaiser knives, check out his channel because he does he does Kaiser as well. Soaring Eagle Outdoor Adventures. Again, just like Waves of 64, he does a bunch of different reviews on a bunch of different knives. Uh, Dr. Frunky is kind of fun. He does videos on, like, modifying your knives. Like, for example, if he didn't like these rivets, he could show you a place where you can go to where you can get, like, the same colored rivets so it would hide that, you know. So he's, he's into doing video reviews like the rest of these guys, but he also does uh, modification videos on how to modify your knife. That's kind of fun to watch. Always check him out. Uh, finally, <laughs> oh, my God, Epic Snuggle Bunny. I can't can't say enough about this guy. This guy's got the most insane uh, uh, knife collection you'll ever see. He's got knives that range from 30 bucks to 1300 bucks. And if you're a beginning collector, this is the guy you want to check out to find out where you're going to want and what you're, you're probably going to wind up if you go all the way through. And that's not, that's not a, an insult. That's a, that's a compliment to Epic Snuggle Bunny. <laughs> Because I want to get to where he is, and I, I know I can't. I also want to say hello and give a quick shout-out to three of my new subscribers. John Lee Smith, Sean Liu, and Trap Town. So uh, I want to give a quick shout-out. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Uh, I really do hope to hear from you, all you guys, and I want to hear from more of you. And if you do like and subscribe on my channel, you're going to wind up on a list like this with their name down there on the bottom. I'm going to make sure I mention you and your channel if you have one. Again, this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off. Happy knife hunting, everybody. Hoping you'll find happiness in your next piece of sharp art.